Cat and Moose podcast. I'm Cat and I'm Moose. This is a true life podcast where we explore the quirks of being human. Guys, I um my computer is currently sitting on a tub of butter. <laughs> Ooh, I want to be your computer so bad right now. <laughs> it's a tub of challenge butter and it's um sea salt whipped <gasps> butter. What? Wait, challenge butter? What do you mean? Yeah, the brand is Challenge Butter with the deer. Is it made by Jesus? I think so. I think so. Cat loves butter. Oh my god. It's All right, let me give you. Let me give you. Cat, are you going to be buried in a vat of butter? Oh my god. I need that so bad. Sea salted whipped butter. Guys, it's oh. it's probably my new favorite thing. Oh my gosh. Anyway, it's also holding up my um, computer so that you can see my face at the perfect angle. Well, so just to be clear, we're still on the road. You don't randomly like to put your computer true. on butter. That's true. That is true. Okay. Mm-hmm. And I do like the angle at which we can see your face, Sarah. It's very nice. Oh, well, thank you. Um, I've, I've realized after, you know, four years of Zoom and COVID and all that kind of stuff that that right where my computer <laughs> camera hits my chest is like right at like the level of my boobs Mm -hmm. and it, it makes it look like I'm a really short person Hmm. with very, a very large chest. Hmm. And when I went to New York a couple of months ago, um, after I'd been doing this virtual class with these people for like 10 weeks, um, one of the guys said, he goes, you're so tall. I thought you were really, really short. <laughs> and, <laughs> and you think it's, it's your, just my boobs. It's just, it's just zoom, my boobs. Zoom and where your boobs land on the zoom. Yeah. That's hilarious. Yeah. Cat. Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was a great New York accent, by the way. It was pretty good. It was a oh, little great. New Jersey. It was a little Jersey. Yeah, and it was meant to be Boston, Massachusetts, oh, so oh, I shit. still didn't get it right. <laughs> Mine all turned Chinese, so. Yeah. Hey, Kat. <laughs> hey, Moose. Hey, Sarah. Hi, guys. Here we are. Here we are. Here we are. Okay, so I made up a story in my head that you guys were in California today. Is that where you are? Yeah, we are. You are correct. We are in uh, the... Right now, we're going to be moving, but we... Wait, where are we? Oh, we are at Pismo, Pismo Beach, Beach, California. Later today, we will be arriving at my favorite place in the world, State Beach in Santa Barbara, California. I'm surprised you're saying it publicly. Me too. You never talk about it because you want it to be your secret place. It is my secret place. Um, yeah, you said that. Like, I'm over here kind of having diarrhea in my chair. <laughs> All right, well... I might bleep it out for no, don't the bleep it out public. <laughs> All right, so this Sarah, how many years has your family done this uh, this vacation together? I I need to double check with the family, but I think this year is like year sixty seven. It's crazy. Wow, that's so cool. I mean, what family does anything that long? Yeah. It's pretty cool. It's a, a state park right on the beach and my family has gone camping there every summer for over sixty years. All the kids learned how to ride their bikes there, and we just go swimming, and we all we get like four campsites, and and aren't there like singalongs by yes. the campfire and yep. stuff like that? My cousin Christy brings her guitar, and she's a singer songwriter. And Kat, you've met Christy, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so fun. I'm so excited, and the dogs are going to. Uh, we keep calling it summer camp. <laughs> <laughs> I keep telling them it's summer camp so that they're excited about it. But it actually is the 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 boarding place. Not that anyone cares about this, but the boarding place we found is called DOG. And and they their whole system is kennel-less. So all the dogs are in the same room at all, you know, like the right sizes are together, but they just are always together at all, all times. So they sleep together. Oh, wow. There's giant, big, you know, sleeping surfaces or pillows or, you know, whatever. And they're just always all together. Wow. It's like a slumber party for dogs. I want to go there and just spend the night. I know. The room is kind of just like an open air space so they could be inside. Well, there's outdoors, too. It's not like a small classroom. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. The the indoor is kind of an open air space so they can run in or go out. And then on the outside, there's like a pool and 
Oh, my goodness. It's kind of a fun little vibe for them for a week. Summer camp. Summer camp. That is so great. I kind of wanted, I, I thought I wanted to be your computer and sit on your butter. And now I feel like I want to be your dog and go to summer camp. I do, too. Yeah. You might just want to hang out with us. Yeah, maybe yeah. you could just come here and sit on our butter. You can just be you <laughs> and be with us. <laughs> Cat, come sit on our butter. This is awkward. <laughs> Anyway, so the dogs will be gone for the week, and we get to spend the week at the beach. And I'm stoked about it. I still have to work, but... A couple of days, yeah, you do have some work. Well, a few hours every day, but you know how it goes. Yep. Um, okay, so what's everyone's highlight of the past week? We've had some some hard, cat, especially you, it's been a hard few weeks. I need some highlights around here. Hmm. I, I got some I got some really good highlights. I have had three days in a row of swimming with friends this week. Fun. No way. Yeah. I mean, they're not as close of friends as we are, but tell us about them. They're just fill ins, right? Yeah. I mean, no, but you guys are like 3000 miles away and that's not my fault. Sarah said they're fill ins. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're not fill-ins. They're stunt doubles. Stunt doubles. <laughs> they're stunt doubles. <laughs> I'm trying to think of which one's more like Moose and which one's more like Sarah. That's a toughie. Um, no, it's been, um, so that's been my highlight is I told myself going into this weekend that I was going to spend this weekend healing because I, I need, a, I just need a break. I need to heal from, you know, physically, mentally, emotionally, all of it. And, um, and so I invited very specific people over at very specific times, um, to come and hang out with me and they accepted and mm. we had a great time. Like that's every so single fun. time it's been, it's been really good. And and it has been what I have wanted and needed. It's been mm. like, okay, like these, this is how I've built my kingdom for this weekend and my kingdom is safe. And, yeah. and it's, it's, um, yeah, it's, it's just been really good. So that's going to, that's going to be my highlight. What are your highlights guys? Well, first off, I have questions about your swim parties because I'm a little jolly. Mm -hmm. Um, did you tell them before they arrived or after they arrived about the, you know, no swimsuit thing that you do at your pool. <laughs> <laughs> How did you break the news to them that it, it's a it's a naked party? Yeah, I have this sign that you can't see until you go out to the pool that says no garment allowed. Yeah, it's it's painted at the bottom of the pool. Yeah, yeah. like yeah. You, you literally, your skin will burn off if you get in this pool with clothes on. Your clothes on. will that's burn what I did. off. I bet yeah. that is hard to invite new people over when that's the rule. Yeah. You know, it's probably a little intimidating. But they, I mean, not, I guess that's why you were surprised they all came, right? <laughs> or not surprised at all. Yeah, like, true, exactly. true, true. Fair. <laughs> uh, Sarah, what's your highlight? Um, my highlight was probably driving through the Redwoods. Oh, yes. Mm. That was very special. We hit, I don't even know if we actually did like, quote, the Redwoods because they're just all over. But we had several, we hit several hot spots of Redwoods. Well, what we found out is unlike the other national parks, the Redwood Forest, you, you're you in it before you even know. Like, yeah. there, there's a couple, like, small signs. Um, because there's just Redwoods everywhere in California. So there's even, like, a Redwood Highway. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so whole point being, um, I think we were in the forest. Yeah. And we went and saw the Giants, and we went and saw the Titans. There's all different kinds mm -hmm. of... The Groves. The Groves. Kat, have you been out here to see the Redwoods? No. Uh-uh. Holy shit. It's going to blow your mind. Oh, I, I can't wait. I haven't seen the Sequoias except on, you know, on I said on film. On film, on my <laughs> on my 1950s. I feel like you have. You've been to Monterey. You've been to Muir Woods. I think there are Sequoias at both. Okay. Maybe I have seen Sequoias, but... Redwoods, there's something about them. They, like, speak to you. And they're not, hmm. I don't know, they're just, like, giants and... I don't know. There's something about them that is spiritual. And I agree. It was a really cool experience. And Sarah has become, you know, she's all things technical anyway. But there's a whole situation with her Forerunner now. She's got a mm -hmm. GoPro on top of mm -hmm. the Forerunner mounted, mm -hmm. like, plugged in, all this stuff. And then as she's driving, she can just pull up on her phone and hit record whenever she wants. And there's been so many incredible videos that she's mm -hmm. captured. Um just driving videos, which have been beautiful. So excited to share those. 
Well, and, and you know that, um, and, and you might talk with, um, one of our mutual friends about putting that stuff up on, um, it's like the associated press or something like that, where you can like put stock quote unquote stock footage and yep. people like license it and you like make money from just this beautiful, like stock yes, footage. So I'll do it. Yeah. Totally and agree. maybe you're already doing that. I don't know. No, but I will. What did you like about the Redwoods? I, I hijacked your story. <laughs> I think it's just, I mean, you can't imagine these trees until you're like driving next to them, you know, mm. or walking next to them or just like you see something that's like, a normal human size and then just this massive tree that just keeps going so much taller than that human or a car or, you know, these things that we're, we're used to seeing. It's just a humongous contrast. And um, so that was really cool to just see as you're driving through like columns of trees. And it's pretty freaking amazing. You even drove through one. What? Yep, we did drive. We drove through one of their, I think there are three trees up, at least in the region that we were in, that you can actually drive your car through. And oh my, my gosh. forerunner barely fit, but we did it. I got a video of it. This guy helped us. Yeah. Wow, that's a, amazing. I, I have found, in the past few years especially, I have found a, um, a real wisdom with trees. Mm -hmm. It's like they've just been through season after yes, season yes, after yes. season. And, um, I remember being little and being taught that you can like count the rings mm -hmm. inside of a tree. And that tells you like how many mm -hmm. years old the tree is, which I don't know if that's true or not, but it, is. it makes me wonder with these redwoods, like the amount of wisdom that they have just packed in, in not only their stature, but also the amount of time it took them to get there. Like, is, mm -hmm. is there any sensation? of that as you as you are with these trees a hundred percent I mean these things have been here long before we ever were you know mm -hmm. and you know in some regard you're like oh man like someone cut a hole right through the middle of this tree so that we could drive through it you know <laughs> but uh at the yeah. same time like there's something really cool about that and also something really sad about that yeah um and mm -hmm. yet there's just I mean there's they're just giants they're giants among our you know among other species, human and non-human. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, and yeah. I don't mean that necessarily aliens. Moose, oh. I know you've got something oh. to say about that later. <laughs> ding, 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 oh, ding, is, ding, it ding. My, is it my turn yet? <laughs> <laughs> what a neat experience, you guys. Moose, what's your highlight this week? Oh, my highlight has nothing to do with all the exciting things that I've experienced out on the road. There are plenty of things, but the one that tops it is definitely the news that came out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, with the Congressional Oversight Committee yeah, about UFOs and UAPs. Do you guys know about, I know I've sent you all the stuff, but do our yeah. listeners know about this and how excited we are? <laughs> yeah. Well, here's what I'm hoping. I was really hoping you were going to bring this up today, Moose. And so, yay. I'm very excited about that. Um, could you please give us a, a like an overview, like an education of what the heck is going on and why this is so important? Yes. I want to point out first um, where Kat is in her life, because I did send this to a group of our friends and um, and I said, it's kind of scary. And one of our friends said, yeah, I thought so, too. And you wrote, Kat, well, I don't click on links, so I don't get scared or something to that effect. And I was like, yeah, she didn't even watch what I sent. But cheers. So I, I would be happy to fill you in as well. Um, Sarah, you have a video I that do. I want to play. I'll tell you when to stop it. But let's just start with this. Okay. You've stated that the government is in possession of potentially non-human spacecraft. Based on your experience and extensive conversations with experts, do you believe our government has made contact with intelligent extraterrestrials? It's something I can't discuss in public setting. Um, okay, I can't ask when you think this occurred. <laughs> um, if you believe we have crashed craft, uh, stated earlier, do we have the bodies of the pilots who piloted this craft? As I've stated publicly already in my News Nation interview, uh, biologics came with some of these recoveries. Yeah. Um, were they, I guess, human or non-human biologics? Non-human, and that was the assessment of people uh, with direct knowledge on the program I talked to that are currently still on the program. And was this documentary evidence, this video, photos, eyewitness? Like, how would that be determined? 
the specific documentation I would have to talk to you in a skiff about. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, okay. So, and, and you may or may not be able to answer my last question, and maybe we get into a skiff at the next hearing that we have, but who in the government either, what agency, sub-agency, what contractors, who should be called into the next hearing about UAPs, either in a public setting or even in a private setting? And, and you probably can't name names, but what agencies or organizations, contractors, et cetera, do we need to call in to get these questions answered, whether it's about funding, what programs are happening, and what's out there? I can give you a specific cooperative and hostile witness list of specific individuals uh, that were in those. And, and how soon can we get that list? I'm happy to provide that to you after the hearing. Super. Thank you. And I yield back. So that was one of the uh, members of Congress who was asking the question, and she mentions the word skiff. I want to mention what that is. It's it's basically like a private room. That oh, okay. um, What does it stand for, Sarah? Uh, sensitive Compartmented Information Facility. Ooh. So all they're saying there when they're referring to a skiff is, in a private setting, I can tell you about this. Yeah. Um, so that's what they're referring to. But basically what has happened is you have three uh, U.S. officials who were not contract. Well, I think one of them was a contractor. The others actually worked for the government who have come forward as whistleblowers to share that they have not only heard of but seen non-human biological, basically aliens, <laughs> something that is not of this world, that was driving these airplanes. They, they know way more than we do about uh, these UFOs. Now, just so everybody knows, UFOs are now being called UAPs, in case you hear that. It's just unidentified aerial phenomenon. I don't quite know. I think there's a little bit of a... Um, what's the word? Delineation? No, I think UFOs people roll their eyes at, so they're starting to call them UAPs. Mm -hmm. But anyway, this was the first time, whether you believe it or not, that there has been an oversight committee looking into the disclosure that aliens exist and these three people were sharing. The one thing for me that was tough was when he said in my article in News Nation, which I think is a very conservative, um, and Matt Gates, who is very conservative, also had a lot to do with this oversight hearing. Regardless of your politics, it is a very interesting question mark right now mm -hmm. around supposedly we have proof I want to hear the next step in this hearing. And also I want to see physical evidence and video and all the things. But um, one of the things they mentioned in this hearing is, are they hostile? Are they here to, you know, because I think information, collect information, et cetera, et cetera. And it was a very, uh, uh, very quick. Yes. From all three of of the people in, in this hearing. The, 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 it was a very quick yes that the beings that are non-human are are hostile are not necessarily hostile but are wanting to collect our information are curious about our capabilities I mean like that's why they're here well I mean why yeah. why are we looking into them I mean it's for the same reasons right it's like yeah, exactly. that's not any that's not bad that's exactly that right. they're curious about us is it no, no. they're just visiting. Well, I don't know that that's true, Sarah. <laughs> I don't think they're just visiting. I, according to these three people, they even went as far as to say they're interested in our nuclear capabilities because mm -hmm. there have been a lot of Ooh. sightings specifically over the years, over many decades, around nuclear sites. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't necessarily mean they're coming to oh. blow us up. It could mean they're curious about or maybe there's something around the nuclear thing that they're interested in. Anyway, what is so fascinating to me as someone who has always believed there has to be more than just us here is they're saying we basically know about 5% of the sightings from actual military people who have seen this. So there's 95% mm. more than what we even think we know mm. that is out there. And I, what, what fascinates me is like, why, why are we so afraid to tell the public? Like, that is my big question. I don't think the government is necessarily afraid of us being fearful. Like I, I was telling Sarah about, 
uh, back when it was just the radio days, there was no TV. There was that radio program called War of the Worlds that was fiction. Mm-hmm. We all, a lot yeah. of us know about. I learned about it when, because I was a broadcasting major, but it. It was fiction, but it scared the hell out of everyone because everyone thought it was actually mm-hmm. happening, that we were being invaded by aliens. So I look at something like that and I go, well, that makes sense. They don't want to instate all this fear. But like, I feel like after the pandemic, after the election before the most current one, et cetera, et cetera, we, we can handle fear. I feel like we're strong. Yeah, we can handle this. Why are they keeping this from us is my question, Kat. And I need you to answer that. Well, I, I have a lot of opinions about this. Um, and I, I really just, first of all, I don't understand, like, if we're going to talk about it a little bit, if we're going to talk about it 5% of what we know, then why aren't we going to talk about the 95% that we know? Like what it, it yeah. is. So I agree. It's like, what is it? So now it's like, quote unquote, international news that there's been UFOs flying around and crashing with aliens in them. Well, no shit. Like, like, well, like we know <laughs> that. Right. And so right. Mm-hmm. it's like, to me, it's like, why not tell us, why not tell us what else? And, and also like, why, also do so many people go to the like they're here to be hostile to destroy us to collect information it's like what if they're here and they're attracted to the nuclear sites because they've learned that we're such fucking idiots with weapons and warfare and stuff like that that we've actually blown ourselves up a thousand times and they're like coming from the future trying to save us from ourselves hey that would be amazing well that was another thing weren't they talking about dimensions We've talked about that on the podcast. Yeah, one. Yeah, I was fascinated. It's one thing when you're talking about physical evidence, I think, in the government. And it's another thing. One of the guys actually said it could be that they are entering from different dimensions. And that's when I got super excited. Yes. Because Mm -hmm. I was like, that makes a lot more sense. Also, how do you not call it? Okay, so I I, clearly we know that I am not a science um aficionado um i am i am not necessarily uh an expert or a phd person here let me let me say that as if you didn't know a phd person a phd person (laughs) but what i can tell you is so we know that you know there are light years that happen within the universe right so Mm -hmm. so is it true that if i were to go to a different um universe it would be like I've seen all of these movies where it's like a hundred years difference or something, mm-hmm. isn't it? When they come back. Yeah. Like Interstellar when they visit that one planet. Yeah, exactly. So how do we know that's not a whole dimension that is happening? Right. Because it's not happening simultaneously necessarily. Mm-hmm. Do you get what I'm saying? Like these aliens, we think of things like earthly beings, don't we? Right. Yeah. It's like, I think there's so much that we don't know. It's like, I was talking with, um, with our friend Mark the other day about the whole God particle thing, the CERN thing in Switzerland, where it's like, you know, they like throw, you know, light together and make what they think is like recreating the big bang and stuff like that. And it's like, I think that there are, are multiple levels or dimensions of intelligence as well. Mm -hmm. And I think that there are some people, you you know, like we've talked about these people who are downloaders, who it's like they they get messages from ancestors or from future people and they invent things and 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 all of that. Mm-hmm. And it's like I just think to think that all of that's not going on at an even broader mm-hmm. level, I yeah. feel like feels relatively ignorant to me. Yeah, we're like afraid of what we don't know. So we just don't believe it. Well, that's why I. Yeah, th- that's what I think the government is doing. I think the government doesn't know. I think mm-hmm. that it is like the white man struggle right there, right? It, <laughs> I'm sorry, but it's like if wait, wait a minute, let me explain though, Cat. I know you're doing a little head shake, but look, it it is all about what do we know, what do we don't know, and we are afraid to look ignorant. Is what mm. my opinion is. Is why we aren't talking about this. It's not that we. It's not that we are like, oh, we'll lose our power or any of that. They don't know. I think if they knew, they'd be like, here's what's going on and here's how we're going to protect ourselves. But I mean, nobody knows. Nobody understands Mm. how a piece of tinfoil can can (laughs) stay in the sky 
and literally have no exhaust coming from it and then in less than a second disappear and they don't have a clue which way it went Mm -hmm. and here's here's where i'm curious and this just may be ignorance on my part which is pretty normal when it comes to the news because i don't keep up with it um is, is that is this only an issue with the united states government or like is 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 China and Russia and Africa and Europe and the North Pole and the South Pole and everything in between like like are are all these people having these same discussions too or is it just an American problem? Hmm. Good question. It is a good question. I don't know that answer. I would guess that some of the other countries that are less democratic are definitely not telling their people, but I don't know. I have no idea. I know that the sightings are everywhere. Right. And so it just kind of makes me wonder, like, like, how do we not even, and and this gets me on my whole soapbox that we don't want to get me on, but it's like, we don't even question the media. Like, we don't even go like, oh, like, was there actually a congressional hearing or was that like a movie set? Like, you know, like, and and I'm I'm being way too. See, that's where I want to shake you. I was going to say, Lord, child. Now, look, (laughs) let me be clear. Do I think a congressional hearing is really going to get to the bottom of this? Hell no. So, like, I hear you on that. No. I mean, it's like pomp and circumstance of, like, hey, let's lay out a – let's create a soap opera that people will watch. And let me tell you, I watched Mm -hmm. it. I watched it. (laughs) I listened to it. I listened to three different podcasts, uh, you know, that dug into what each little detail meant, all of it. But – I'm with you. Like, I'm sure it's just like part of the way to like act like we're holding people accountable. I want to say, you know, these whistleblowers, who the hell knows? Like they could be making shit up. They could be legit. Like, I want to believe they're legit. But the minute they started like talking about, he specifically said it wasn't Newsmax, but it was something, you know, I forget. I said it earlier, but the minute he said that, I was like, why did you have to say that? Just answer the question, you know? So a little bit of right, it felt right. a little pomp and circumstancy, but who knows, man? I just, I told Sarah, I was like, I want to see a UFO, but I don't want them to see me <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because I have these reoccurring nightmares mm. since I was a kid of a UFO following my car. And like, I was extreme, like I have them still. And, and I'm highly aware that they see me. I think they like me. Like, I think I'm like, I, I think they're yeah. cool with me, but I also don't want to get uh-huh. on their bad side. So I'd like to experience it, but I don't want like, I don't want to get like beamed up, you know? Yeah, I'm I'm laughing because I like in in this is something that I I find that I do all the time and I don't know if it's just like human nature or if it's narcissistic or if it's my like black hole of wanting connection with people, which I think that's what it is, um, is, is I'm thinking of course my own experience. It's like you, you have this like recurring nightmare of, you know, a UFO like following you as a young person and, and, and all of that. And, and I find for myself that I really, really badly like as in like Helen Hunt from Twister, I really badly want to see and be in a tornado. Oh. Like really, really bad. Oh, I could see that. Oh, I love the movie Twister. It's one of my top movies. But like be guaranteed that like I'm gonna be okay. You know? Yeah. And and like it's so it's you kind of like you're, it's like I'm fascinated with UFOs and I'm fascinated with the aliens and I don't want to get on their bad side and I'm have some curiosity. You know, and I feel the same way about tornadoes. It's like, I'm like, I feel all those same things too. And it's like, what is that human? Is it, is it like a, a curiosity? Is it a search for near death experiences? Like, what is it that we're both so fascinated by? Like, I'm curious about that. I am too. Cause I know what you mean. Like I, I (laughs) am scared of heights and it's gotten worse as I've gotten older. Like I've told our listeners about where I had a full on meltdown walking next to the Grand Canyon, (laughs) holding my sister's hand, screaming, don't go towards the end. Uh, And there's good reason. Lots of people have fallen into the hole. But I always just think about whoever was around you guys at that moment. (laughs) They were like, holy shit. Yeah, like a 40 some year old woman is, I mean, we're at least 30 feet from the actual (laughs) hole, but I'm, I'm seeing all these people standing on the edge. The fact that you're calling it a hole is amazing. (laughs) 
<laughs> it is a deep hole full of death is what it really is. Like, yep. but I'm with you. What like, a beautiful I still hole it is. Wanna go, <laughs> I still want to go see it. Sarah's been, I mean, I've been driving the RV. is uh, It's attached to a 4Runner, right? But we've been driving on these very precarious roads in all of these different national parks. And, I mean, I full on, it's like. What is the chakra that's down in your perineum? <laughs> the root chakra. <laughs> yeah, my root chakra is so tight to this day from holding my pelvic floor together <laughs> as we've gone along these like curves and giant holes that, um, yeah, I'm with you. I love it. And yet I'm like, I'm going to die at any minute. Mm-hmm. It's exciting uh-huh. and fun. And mm-hmm. I guess everything we're supposed to experience in life. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you're saying that like, if we, if we were to rewind like that, that this um, topic, this news, this congressional hearing thing is that has been the highlight of your week. Yes, absolutely. I mean, it's been very interesting. Yes. I mean, I, I've, I've also really enjoyed you know, the Redwoods and the, oh, I'll tell you, Cannon Beach in Oregon. I almost skipped it because I was like, it's a rock in the ocean. Let me tell you what we did, Kat. <laughs> so we take the dogs down to Cannon Beach. It is so beautiful if you haven't been. It's on the coast of Oregon. And, um, and <laughs> Kat, you're going to just die. So we have the dogs. And all of a sudden, I bet Sarah just shit herself the minute she saw. I start running. What in the hell? I just start running like I'm um like not like a sprinter. I'm more of a um it was it was like I was in a field full of daisies and I found my field that I've been searching for forever. Huh. It was so stinking beautiful. The tide was out, so you could actually walk on the beach without feeling like you're gonna break your ankles. You know what I mean? Sometimes <laughs> nice. you're in the sand and you're like, my ankle just broke. How am I going to get out of here? Yeah. It was like flat and hard and all the things. So I'm like running on it. And I looked at Sarah and I go, I'm running. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's all my body could do. It was so beautiful and so happy. So that and the UFOs are my two highlights of the week. Yeah, that's that's pretty amazing. You you guys have both had really beautiful highlights this week and mine too. Like we've had really great highlights and much like what you're saying, I've had several things things like as you've been talking I'm like oh my gosh this happened to you and oh my gosh this happened I want to show you something and um I sent you guys a social media post about this earlier this week because I think I'm Nick Jonas but um I have a new insulin pump Ooh, that thing looks like a small computer it looks like a little iphone yeah it is it is a small computer and um my my insulin pump of over five years i had a little ceremony for it and everything um it died and well it just got really sick and and before it died they sent me a new one um so it really i didn't have any interruption in my um my care for my diabetes and my body. But, um, that was kind of a highlight this week to get, to, to have a ceremony, to thank my old insulin pump and to also welcome my new insulin pump. I mean, that um, thing has kept you alive for five years. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, in it, in it, like it's with me all the time. It's a little bit like Jesus, you know, it's like never, we're never apart like me in in Mm -hmm. this insulin pump. So, um, so that was kind of a highlight this week to get to have that, um, experience. And then do you know what else happened? Oh my gosh. Somebody bought me flowers. They did. That is so sweet. You have, you need some flowers. You have had a rough go the past few weeks. Do you want to talk about your flowers? I I do. I kind of do. I, I, um, uh, one of our clients, um, Matt played the Opry this week and it was awesome. He played this song called take it easy. That is a part of a compilation that, um, supports this organization called sanctuary mental health. And basically what that is, is it's an organization that helps, um, church leadership talk to their congregations about mental health. Gotcha. Mm, that's cool. And so it's just really beautiful. And this song, um, Take It Easy, just uh it's just so good for my soul right now. And um and Matt played it at the Opry the other night and um his the guy that runs his booking agency came up to me and I said, his name is also Matt, and I said, Matt, thank you so much for being here. And he said, Kat, I actually I just showed up tonight to hug you. 
And, and it was just so sweet that That's it's like, really sweet. even though that was very charming and he probably didn't fully mean it, he showed up obviously to support our client. Um, but, but also he was so kind to me and he's Hang like, on. he meant it. He meant it. That, that you can't take that from him. He meant that. Mm, mm, okay. Well, thanks. That's really sweet. Um, and um, anyway, I got uh, next the next day I was um, running out to the mailbox for something and I was like, what is that? And beside my door was this big, beautiful bouquet of flowers and very like mm-hmm. mild earth tones. It wasn't like pink and purple and ye- yellow. It mm-hmm. was very like a subtle, very beautiful, big bouquet, probably cost 150 bucks. Wow. That's and, amazing. um, and it came with a note and it said, I'm sorry that, um, we couldn't send you something you could drink. We wanted to send you flowers, um, and just tell you that we love you. And we're so sorry you've had such a, you know, challenging month or whatever. And it was from that booking agency. Like they, it was just very, that's so cool. very sweet. And it felt really good to be loved on like that. That's so cool, Kat. They wanted, the reason I text you and reminded and needed to be reminded of your favorite wine is that's what they were trying to do. <laughs> oh, but I had no could, idea. I was like, why are you, why are you so curious about this <laughs> well, all of I a knew, sudden? I knew that you love La Crema, but I thought that you were doing that St. Franciscan something for a while there. So anyway, I, they wanted to do that for you, but apparently you can't ship wine to Tennessee anymore. Hmm? I, I don't know what what's up with that because you can like dial it up on drizzly and like have a fifth of vodka delivered to your door but i'm kind of glad that for whatever reason they ran into that roadblock because like the flowers just really it, it just took yeah. it over the top man it was so sweet i love that that's so sweet Me too. it's so sweet it's nice to find kind people can i tell you something that happened to us yesterday that was a a jesus moment <laughs> yes Okay. So <laughs> Sarah said, okay. Um, okay. I can't not tell the story. Yeah, it's true. Um, so we were in Petaluma, California, which is a beautiful area of California. Near Napa. Near Napa. And it Ooh. feels very Napa-ish with the rolling hills and all of that. And, um, and so we were at this campsite and it's interesting, like in California and in the Pacific Northwest, like there's tons of rules that aren't there for campsites in the South um, or anywhere else in the country, really. Yeah. Like you can't hang a hammock on a tree. You really can't touch a tree. You know, they don't want anything hanging from trees because they don't want to hurt them, uh, which I really appreciate. Like at mm-hmm. first I was like, I want to hang my damn yeah. hammock. But then yeah. I was like, no, I get it. You have beautiful trees. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, um, a lot of those rules are like, you know, smoke free campsites and stuff like that. No burning. Yeah. Like you can't even have a campfire. You can't smoke a cigarette. You can't smoke a vape, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So, um, so at this Petaluma campsite at the KOA, there were, um, people that were, that were partaking in, um, the flower, flowery stuff that California and the West is kind of known for. Um, it's a agricultural crop. Mm-hmm. And um, so you dry it out, roll it up, smoke it. <laughs> yeah, there were people on our on our campsite ha- partaking in that. And we were like, wow, like they're pretty bold. And so uh, about an hour later, Sarah and I were packing up uh, the, the RV to head down south. Mm-hmm. And this gentleman walks by and he goes, um, busted ya. And he thought we were the ones, you know, smoking the, the, the green herb. And, and I smile and I go, what? And he puts a, uh, a jar, a ball. What are those called? Um, you know, like a canning jar, ball. Like ball, mm-hmm. the ball jars. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Ball yeah. jars? That is not the it's right way jar. to say it. But it's a yeah, ball I mean, jar. It's a anyway, ball, jar, yeah. ball brand. Mason jar. Mason That's jars. what people call them in the South. Mason jars. And so um, it, it's... He, he sets it down on the picnic table and it takes me a second. It's it's canned like you would can some peaches. And then he winks and he goes, caught ya. And he goes, here's some stuff I grew in my garden last year. And he just kept walking. And he just kept walking. What? And I turn around and I'm like, okay, that is a green substance that grows out west. And I look at him and I said, I'm glad we got busted. And he just laughs hysterically, but just keeps walking. Yeah. 
I turned around to Sarah and I said, that is one of the nicest things anyone has ever done. Number mm-hmm. one, mm-hmm. because he doesn't know us from Adam. But what he said in that moment is, I got you. And try some of this. Here's a little yeah. something. It's like somebody leaving a tomato, your next door neighbor yeah. knocking on your door and saying, I <laughs> grew some tomatoes. It's exactly the same. And I yeah. literally, I was so moved by it because I got to tell you, out of camping, it, listen, I'm with you if you're like, I don't like to camp in tents. Me either. Get mm-hmm. yourself a little RV, go yeah. spend a couple thousand dollars, get a shitty little RV and go camping. These people, luckily, most of these campsites don't allow any political flags or anything like that. The coolest thing about camping is you don't know anyone's political affiliation mm-hmm. and everyone is kind to one another. Yeah, like, we're all there doing the same thing. I love that. Exactly. And, and it feels like... I told this to Sarah. It feels like this 1950s community where people kept their doors unlocked and everybody's sitting outside and waving to each other. We have no idea. Are you one of me or am I one of you? You're not thinking that. No one cares. Yeah. I'm always like everyone had the same idea this week or weekend or whatever Mm -hmm. we showed up to go camping here. Yeah. And this is the group that showed up this week. Yeah. Yeah. It's fun. And we have met so many people that we've kept in touch with. Um, that we've exchanged phone numbers with or whatever, but like it, it moved me so much that he did that. I know there's a little funny and jest in there, but I'm totally being serious. He was just very generous. But then next door to us, I heard this guy was packing up from camping and he's like, Hey, do you guys want our, um, our wood? We're, we're headed home. And people are just like sharing things like they did back in the day. You could knock on someone's door and go, do you have any butter? And we're like, yeah, we've got butter. You know, (laughs) but the thing is, is like anywhere else in any other setting, we wouldn't talk to these people and they probably wouldn't talk to us. No, You know what I mean? And it's so good for me as someone who in the past season has isolated myself a lot and like just tried to be in a healing zone Mm. to like look around and see just humans and not go, are you for me or are you against me? But mm-hmm. you're just here. Yeah. And like, you mm-hmm. seem kind. And when I walk my dog, you wave at me. I, that doesn't happen. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Right. And so right. there is something healing about being out here on the road and receiving agricultural goods from mm-hmm. local friends. <laughs> yeah. Just locally grown. Locally grown f- uh, vegetables. That's, that's really awesome. What a cool experience. And like the, the thing that I feel like I'm, I'm hearing out of everything that you're saying is like just the beauty of true community. Yes. You know, it's like when I've, when I've studied, um, five, Chinese five element theory, it's like, it it's all based on the relationship between a parent and a child. And really? so it's like fire is the mother to earth. And wood is the grandmother to earth. And so it's all based on like a family system Mm -hmm. because back in the ancient times, that's all they had was each other. It's like, well, we've got to share the wood and we've got to share the herbs and we've got to share the food and we've got to share the water. And, and I think that like, and, and, and we all know this, but it's like my, my former therapist told me one time, she said, technology has developed way faster than our ability to adapt to it. Completely mm-hmm. agree. And mm-hmm. it's like, I'm thankful for that because we can do a podcast sitting in three different places across mm-hmm. the country. Yep. And I'm so glad for technology that we can do that. And at the same time, the fact that it feels unusual mm-hmm. for someone to come and gift you with a jar of something delicious or for someone to give you the rest of their firewood the fact that that's not a common everyday experience for us that makes me sad that Mm -hmm. it's like and and then it also makes me really want to celebrate that you guys are out in it and you're you're having that kind of community and that kind of connection and it's like I have to imagine doesn't that restore some sort of like hope (laughs) it does Mm -hmm. it does and you know what's interesting and you guys are going to get this because you know, this is our ego rising up. But one of the things when I decided to take this trip it was, is I was like, I don't think I'm going to tell many people because my clients are going to think I'm not working. Like that was a big thing that came up for me. Mm-hmm. And I was like, mm-hmm. I even found myself earlier mm-hmm. saying I have to work a few hours every day. You know, like I even said that in order yeah. to let the world know. But I did tell two of my key clients, you know, I'm, I'm doing this trip. I'm going to be working this specific week. I'm going to be off, et cetera, et cetera. But the interesting thing working out here, as long as I've got Wi-Fi, is like 
I have no stress. Like mm. I'm, I'm working at a picnic table wow. underneath trees in a, in a state that is <laughs> thousands of miles away, yeah. you know? Right. And like, it, it's interesting, like the things that would get to me in enclosed space even, um, or things that would get to me even being in Nashville mm-hmm. and the proximity, like mm-hmm. there's something about having, um, having the distance between, you know, Nashville is a hub for what we do and getting away from that for weeks at a time is so healthy. Mm-hmm. And I encourage anyone to do mm-hmm. it, you know? And I, it's funny cause I, I had, um, a colleague who will text me about once a week and be like, are you sitting by a campfire? And, and, you know, I have this immediate feeling of like, <gasps> no, no, I'm not <laughs> no, sitting I'm by working. a campfire. No, I'm in front of my computer working <laughs> yeah. nonstop, nonstop. And I'm feeling some of that fall off of me too, of like, mm. Hey, look, if I'm, you got to trust me. Like I, mm-hmm. I and, and here's the reality. We're doing a trip that I know looking back on my life in the later years, I'm going to say that was one of the most epic yeah. trips yeah. I've ever done. Like, yeah. I mean, the, yeah. the national parks we've been able to hit on the way out here and the beauty of America that we've been able to see. And honestly, I've seen a lot of America because I've had the opportunity to travel with my work. Mm -hmm. But these are places I've never seen before. And Mm -hmm. it's just really neat because I sort of Mm -hmm. sometimes I'm like, well, I've been to Hawaii. I've done that, you know, all this like. But I saw things I've never seen in this country. And that in itself is healing Mm. to be like, I've never been here before. Mm. What does this place have to teach me or show me? Mm -hmm. And I've just tried to be really open handed with all of that of like, okay. And Sarah and I, Sarah loves a plan, let me tell you. And she hates when a plan gets changed. It's but hard. We have both been very open handed. We have taken 10 hours to get somewhere that mm-hmm. takes five hours so mm-hmm. that we can pull off the road when it mm-hmm. says, you know, there's a vista over here you're going to want to see. A vista? What yeah. would you call it? A vista? <laughs> vista? It's not a, a vista. A scenic overlook. <laughs> a scenic overlook? Wait. A vista. It's not a vista? A vista. Look, I can call it what I want. Okay, you can. Thank you. But you're right. It's been beautiful. <laughs> it's really, it's been healing, I will say. And I'm not mm-hmm. sure I'm coming back. <laughs> I, I love that for you guys. Kat, we might stay out so you can come well, meet us somewhere yeah, if just, you like. Just ask where we are or going to be. Yeah, I was going to say, normally I'd be really sad about hearing like, hey, we may not come back. And it's like, you know what? I'll just come to you then. Yeah, like I, like this, this is the, we're doing things in, in the way of Wu Wei, right? We're mm-hmm. in the river, we're in yep. the flow and, and great, don't come back. Like, let me know what you need me to bring and yes. I'll come meet you. You okay, know, it's great. like, that's, that's easy peasy. So, um, God, it makes me kind of stressed out though, thinking about like, how are you going to pack up your house and sell your house? And like, oh my gosh, you're going to have to come back a little bit. You're going to have to, you're going to have to help. Yeah. We might need some help with that. Yeah. <laughs> and we're going to, I'm definitely going to need you deliver our cats to bigger us travel trailer too. Yeah. Can you, can you gather up the cats and bring them meet us somewhere? Yeah. <laughs> you just see me, there would be a total of six cats in the car, like five of yours and me. And it's like, just like driving down the road like the car full of cats yep. <laughs> i have one more quick thing i want to close with if you guys okay. don't mind yeah um it was also an exciting part of my week um it's it's gonna be shocking and from the news as as we are used to from me mm-hmm. um cat would you mind reading this <laughs> what is that okay um you always give me hard names to pronounce um okay so this is from an account called history photograph no, photographed. History photographed. Oh, I see. It's got the H-E-D. God, I was like, what a stupid name. Okay, so, um, okay, this guy, Sanju Bagat, was born in Nagpur, India in 1963. He had a normal life until his late 20s when his abdomen began to protrude as if he were pregnant. It kept increasing until he couldn't carry out his daily activities. Things got out of hand in 1999 when his breathing almost stopped due to his extremely enlarged abdomen which didn't give his chest room to take in air he was rushed to the hospital at the hospital the doctors believed he had a massive tumor growing inside him and worked him up for surgery to their utter amazement when they opened him up they saw a baby in his stomach it appeared sanju didn't have a tumor he had 
his unborn brother growing inside of him for more than 35 years. In medical terms, this was a rare case of fetus in fetu. Basically, what that means is that one twin doesn't fully separate from the other during development and ends up growing inside of the other twin's body. The twin oh that's growing inside God. is usually very small and underdeveloped and is called a parasitic twin. Oh my God. Uh, Could you imagine? Whoa. That is a name to call your brother. A parasitic twin. Whoa. That is so wild. So that just kept. So what I'm wondering is for 35 years, did the dude not want to get it checked out? I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I guess he just thought he was eating too many Cheetos or something. But <laughs> this this person put this on the we love the comments. This person, Jack Greystone, um, said, when my mother was pregnant with me, they found out she was having twins. A few weeks later, they discovered that I had resorbed the other fetus. I believe his tissues have made me stronger. I now have the strength of a grown man and a little baby weird <laughs> that's the guy that's that's a quote from dwight Schrute from the office anyway um oh it is <laughs> yeah oh. <laughs> <laughs> thank you sarah i was like that's really weird okay remember this from my my big fat greek wedding so somebody put this quote on here so i go to the doctor and he did the bio the bu the bios the bio bob ops the bobopsy inside the lump he found teeth and a spinal cord yes inside the lump was my twin that was aunt viola from my big fat greek wedding do you guys remember <laughs> that i remember that freaking me out yeah. that people have teeth in yeah. their in their back like that's real <laughs> oh, that's so oh that is guys. so creepy <laughs> okay let's stop looking at it uh, it is something else so uh, so i'm guessing the his brother didn't make it is that right he was just in there yeah growing for 35 years and still a fetus like that's just There's like no it's as mind-boggling as aliens are to me yeah well maybe it was an alien who it knows probably was by the way i think i've mentioned this before but i do have a family member who says they were um i must have adopted by Ad aliens abducted, abducted. he might have been adopted too but um, I just gave away their gender, but uh, they, <laughs> they, they believe, they believe that they were abducted by aliens and I'm not sure I disagree with them for what it's worth. Mm. I, I'm not sure that I disagree with them either. Like, I, I think that like, I, to me, I just want to honor their experience. And it's like, I, I ask myself, like, why wouldn't people from another dimension, another time and another place want to come here and check out things like that news story you just read? Yeah. That's very interesting. Like, why wouldn't why wouldn't they want to come and, and see what the heck is going on with us? Or the I, Grand Canyon. Or the hole in Arizona called the Grand Canyon. <laughs> <laughs> Why wouldn't they want to come see the hole? The giant hole. Come see our hole. Okay. Special thanks to our producer, Sarah Reed. To find out more, go to catandmoosepodcast.com. Yeah.